Hello, thank you all for joining me. In this video, we're going to be talking about future tech. Now, if you were with us on the stream that we did last week, we talked about Humane, the device that more people should be excited about releasing in spring 2023. We're going to talk about that in just a sec. But today, I'm sitting here in my warm ski chalet. And let me take you through a rundown of what's been up. Last week, we celebrated the graduation of cohort six of 10K designers. So congrats to you if you're one of those people. About 100 designers went through a transformative 12 week experience where they made friends, they learned about design, worked on assignments, received feedback from our mentors, and they are currently working on their portfolio and their final projects. And I'm super excited to see that. So post that, I wanted to take a break. I am in this little village called Aldrans in the Alps. A time for me to really read, work on some stuff, do some concentration practice, meditate, bliss out looking at these beautiful mountains here, here I am. But that's not what this video is about. Now, Wednesday, it was time to really kickstart that direction. We did that Wednesday stream, and that was the start of our weekly streams for this season. So hit that subscribe button, hit the bell icon, in fact, if you wanna be notified about the next stream where you and I can talk. But if you were there, you're gonna remember that we went on an insane trip. And overall, the theme of our discussion was what does a post-smartphone world look like? Do you believe such a world is even possible? A world without screens? Now, one way we would definitely like to think about this is, yeah, we lived in a world without screens. So to go back to one doesn't seem so much of a hassle. In fact, to a lot of you here, you're probably excited by that possibility of reducing your screen time to zero, of going to a world where you were not constantly on your phone. So I recently read this book called the best interface is no interface. And one of the very interesting stories that they talk about in that was the idea that in the 80s, there was this paper where they talked about what is the vision for an office of the future look like. And the theme that they went with, right? Keep in mind, this is the 80s, was one day with computer technology, with personal computers, the next generation is gonna work in a paperless office. That was the vision, a paperless office is a big deal. At the surface, it's like, yeah, sure, paper is out there. Yeah, yeah, and you and I, when was last time we, we touched paper? And me right here, because I'm trying to make a point. I'm also trying to, you know, for this video, go back to paper with the, this ink pen here. If you weren't there for the stream, let me tell you what we're excited about and why this screenless future is just as hard to imagine as a paperless office today, but is very likely with this one company that's a challenger that is really gonna do this. This company is Humane, started by two ex-Apple employees that's all set to release their product this year in spring 2023, likely in a couple of weeks. Now, let me take a side note here to remind you that GPT-4 launches this summer as well. Apple's first AR it said was supposed to be out by the end of Q1, but it's been postponed a little bit as well. That's three major releases happening just in the first half of this year alone. Now, there might be more that I'm missing, but coming back to Humane, I think that they present a very compelling picture of this world where our relationship to these devices is one characterized by ambient technology, one that is without a screen strapped to your face. And what they're really trying to build is a hardware and software platform that is built bottoms up with AI, machine learning, and computer vision. A device that probably attaches to your front right here, probably controlled by voice based on some of their patterns that we went through, and one that uses laser projection to project interfaces, project information, to project in the moment computing in your everyday life. And one way you could do that is the palm of your hand. So at any point when you raise your palm, your device that's kind of probably here, a wearable device, projects onto this palm and gives you contextual information. Now, what we did was we dived a little bit deeper. Post that stream, it really got me thinking and all the excitement that you guys put into this pushed me a little further and I was like, let's go a little deeper here. What we did was we joined Humane's Discord. It was very nice to see that our stream had already reached them, by the way. I found the link there. I spent some time here. I was subscriber number around 100 something for their YouTube channel. Uh, Sam Sheffer, he posted the link. And one thing that it really reminded me of, one of my favorite movies, Her. Now, when I first watched it, the thing that I was immediately struck by was how 
different the vibe was. Unlike other sci-fi movies, very clearly her has a utopian, non-apocalyptic, non-cyberpunk, dark, gritty, neon lights. It's got the opposite aesthetic to that. Well, basically, I have intuition. I mean, the DNA of who I am is based on the millions of personalities of all the programmers who wrote me. But what makes me, me, is my ability to grow through my experiences. So basically, in every moment I'm evolving, just like you. Which makes it one of my favorite movies that depicts a really positive future where our interactions with technology are super positive. But going deeper into this movie, her does have this warm feeling, this movie. Right? When you look at the interfaces in this movie, you see right from the red warm tone to the soft interactions and animations that are observed throughout the movie. And what I found so interesting about this is that instead of a world where high tech means that it's so high tech that it kind of swallows everyday life and it just changes everything, it's so high tech that it actually blends into the background, right? A huge difference here. Now, that is a vision of the future that I really, really gel with. And the reason this becomes highly relevant a couple of years after that movie released is that the most recent advancements that you and I are aware of, number one, software seems to be going conversational with ChatGPT, with Midjourney, with the idea of prompting an AI, and this large language model returns these results to you. Over the last couple of months, ChatGPT by OpenAI has blown up, crossing millions of users in just a few weeks. Now, as part of my research, I was watching this Sam Altman video, this interview he did, where he mentions that AI is gonna be as big of a paradigm shift as mobile was, as smartphones were in the last decade in 2010s. I mean, the way that I talk about it is just like on-demand intelligence that is like way less expensive and way faster. Mm -hmm. You can definitely like go off and have an artistically talented person generate images for you, but it took a while and it was not like close to free. And one of the things that I think we're seeing is when you make something way faster and way less expensive, it is a qualitative shift in what's possible. People pointed out when the kind of iPhone is remote control for the world thing came along, they're like, well, why do I need this thing called Uber? I can just like call a taxi. And you know, when the, when the very first image generators launched, it's like, well, why do I need this? I can just like pay an illustrator to do it. But it turns out that like the world doesn't quite work that way. And when these things change by like orders of magnitude on these two axes, it's, it's like really different. Now that really, really got my attention. Smartphones, yeah. Smartphones are the primary computing device through which you and I, through which humans interact with technology. There's more smartphones in the world than there are desktops, for example. The internet penetration has been on the rise. In India, you have the geo effect, but speaking purely from personal experience, growing up in Bangalore, right from the early 2000s or 2002, I've personally watched as the world around me has changed. To many, the future of technology doesn't lie in Silicon Valley, but in places like Bangalore. Recent evidence suggests that this is already happening, as emerging economies like India's make up almost 60% of global GDP, according to the IMF. Now, computers used to be this thing which you had on your desk. You kind of, as a white collar worker, go, you work on your computer, at the end of the day, you clock out, and the next time you use that computer, is the next day when you go back to the office, right? So what this implies is number one, we weren't connected all the time. Number two, it was primarily a work setting, right? Unless, of course, you had a personal computer at home. And number three, the general public had no clear reason to interact with this. And the general public in India could not afford a personal computer. But beyond that, India is one of those countries where we kind of leapfrogged the desktops and gone straight to mobile. So there's a lot of internet users today in India who's first device is the smartphone that they've used, not used a desktop before. From that perspective, from that time when desktops were the primary device, and the, because it was this work setting, because it was this expensive machine that was huge, expensive to maintain, it meant a lot of people were out of the benefits information technology could give, right? They did not have as good access. Now, in India, of course, you know that there were internet 
cafes where you could go and download. On the street, you could buy DVDs. Today, of course, that's been replaced by phone covers that you see on the street. But this is the point that I'm trying to make to you. The world we live in today is now every single person has a smartphone in their pocket. Whether that's parents, grandparents, kids, your taxi person, your auto person, the guy you're buying Nariel from on the street, the guy you're buying Chai Sutta from, pretty much everybody has a smartphone. And what does that enable? Applications build on top of it, which is you have digital payments, you've got the good morning messages going on WhatsApp, delivery on demand, home repair, you've got online education, you've got all this digital content, whether that's entertainment or for upskilling, you've got the cheapest 4G data in the world, thanks to Geo. In general, think about the massive, massive digital abundance that has been created by smartphones, right? Smartphones have made tech and tech applications accessible to a large population of the world that did not have access to this, right? Billions of users. Now, as a designer, this is also what I have built my career on. I was in high school when the first iPhone came out. And by the time I was in college, I was all in freelancing. So I first learned design mostly to do t-shirts and posters and things like that. But the wave was just on. So I did freelancing design iOS apps for individuals, founders, companies all over the world who now had this massive land grab that they wanted to participate in. As smartphones were getting better, as more people were buying smartphones, as the ecosystems were being nurtured by the smartphone, things like the App Store, it was quite the gold rush. And me, I just happened to be right there in college while this was happening. Freelance made the most of it. By the time I was done with college, that kind of made its way to India in Bangalore with the whole tech rush. We had companies like Flipkart, Swiggy, Uber, Ola, Dunzo, which were all born during that time. So I had a great time. But coming back to the Sam Altman video, what really, really got my attention, the question that was asked was, if you say that AI is as much of a paradigm shift as smartphones, what's the one word phrase in which you kind of just say it? And to me, it was so interesting. So the example Sam gives is smartphones. The promise was that this would become the remote control of your life. And hence the apps were developed, right? You can use this remote control to say, hey, get me some food, get me a cab. You know, I want to figure out what's happening right now. I want to book some ski slopes that I want to go and figure out, but I need to figure out which ones are the right ones for my skill level. In addition to that, I need to go rent some equipment. All these things I do with this remote control device, this phone. Now, if the phone is a remote control for your life, the example that Sam gave was AI will be intelligence on demand, available to everybody. That needs some unpacking. Now, that's a very powerful statement. Really one worth thinking about. With smartphones, a statement as simple as a remote control for your life, I don't think we would have imagined the ways in which it would manifest. Right Today, we kind of take that for granted. Now, taking our attention back to the movie Her. The world in Her definitely is one where, number one, technology is ambient. It's in the background. It's not fighting for your attention. Oh, well, what do I call you? Do you have a name? Um, yes, Samantha. Really? Where'd you get that name from? I gave it to myself, actually. How come? Because I like the sound of it. Samantha. Number two, it's voice-based, right? So natural language. It understands you, hears you. It has a context about what's going on. So do you know what I'm thinking right now? Well, I take it from your tone that you're challenging me. Maybe because you're curious how I work? Do you want to know how I work? Yeah, actually. How do you work? And to me, her does fulfill the vision of instant access to intelligence on demand for everybody. And that only leaves me with one question. How long before I can talk to Samantha? How long before I can just plug in my AirPods and just receive and be able to talk to an intelligent agent who understands my life as well as I do? All the things going on, all the people involved, my context of where I am. To give you a quick example, uh, this was something I found in the Humane chat where today, if you're checking in into an Airbnb, let's say you're checking into a place like this, you know where the location is. Let's say you're just outside, 
Your smartphone knows you're there, you're near the location. It knows it's you that you have a booking that's available. It also has all this context that it can use to decide and serve up suggestions to you. However, the model of how it currently works is you take your phone out of your pocket, you unlock it with the code or your, with your face ID, you exit the app that you are currently in, you search for Airbnb or, you know, scroll to find the app, click it, it opens, you go to a particular tab, post details, this, that, and now you see it. Going deeper into humane, what I also loved was the idea of the intelligence age and thinking about the fact that we might soon be able to talk to smart, intelligent voice assistants like Samantha from her made me realize that yes, we are about to enter this intelligence age. Now, all of us know about the industrial age. The steam engine as a device was something that really accelerated and enabled industrial age. We also know about the printing press as a technology really enabled information to be free and to be widely distributed and available to everyone. Smartphones, desktop, the internet, computing brought about the information age where today at our fingertips we have all of the world's combined knowledge but also our own knowledge, our own notes, our own contacts, the projects that we're working on, the people we're collaborating with, the threads that I have, whether that's my family, whether that's work, whether that's the 10K designers members that I'm talking to and the questions they're asking me, right? It enables me to be connected to the world in a much, much deeper way than without this. But if we are at the cusp of a brand new paradigm shift, we are using this information that we have available to create intelligence out of this, whether that's chat GPT, whether it's these large language models and it's AI that's really, really proliferating all of tech, or it's the device humane. So I really want to ask you this from the industrial age to the information age, we are now headed to the intelligence age. Humane does seem to be at the forefront of an AI device that can do all of this for you. I hope you enjoyed that little video. I am super excited to be back with these weekly videos. As always, if you would like to talk to us, join in the stream. We would love to hear your ideas, your thoughts on this. And one of the best ways to do that is to join our Wednesday streams. So hit the subscribe button. You will get probably a notification when we go live next on Wednesday. I'm also diving deep into some HCI papers, human computer interaction and new media papers written pre-internet, during the internet and overall in the last 30 to 50 years. And now that we are at the cusp of this new change, uh, I thought it'd be nice to time travel a little bit and see what is there to explore. So thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.